Hey, Crossing Church family, we are so glad that you're joining us for church today. Wherever you're watching from, we wanna encourage you not just to be a spectator, but to participate with us. So worship with us, take notes during the message, and even connect with us by going to our website and clicking that connect button right there at the top of the page. We would love to know how we can walk through life with you. You know, if you need help or if you need prayer of any kind, you can reach out to us by texting I need help to 31996 and someone from our care team will contact you to see how we can help. If you give your life to the Lord today, we are so excited. That is the best decision that you could make and we would love to know. You can text I said yes to 31996 and we'll send you a gift to help you get started on this journey with Christ. Well, again, we're so glad that you are with us today. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning, Crossing Church and Crossing Online. Would you just stay with us as we worship our Lord this morning? Let's give Him praise. Sorry. 
worship you. Come on, just begin to posture your heart right now for worship. Come on. Pastor was speaking about holiness on Wednesday night. Father, we enter into your gates with praise and thanksgiving, Lord. And we say you're holy, Jesus. You're holy, Jesus. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me. Come on, church. To carry your victory. Perfection can never earn it. You give what we don't deserve it. You take the broken things hey. and raise them to glory. Say, you are my champion. Giants, giants for when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it all. Oh, you conquer it, Jesus. Come on, sing it. I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. Oh, this is my victory. Cause you are my champion. And giants for when you stand undefeated. Every Every battle of you, and I am, I am who you say you crown me in. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Father, we glorify your name. Come on, just offer up praises of sacrifices of thanksgiving. We bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, church, sing this out. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Yeah, Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Yes, we know Jesus has say when I Every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Yes, we know Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the You conquer it all. 
We set our eyes on you today. We focus our hearts and our minds on you in the midst of the chaos. God, you are worthy to be praised. You are high and lifted up in this place. And we worship you. Would you sing this with me? The reign of darkness now has ended In the kingdom of light In the kingdom of light Forever under your dominion You're the king of my life You're the king of my life You reign above it all You reign above you reign above it all on the cross the work was finished God you poured out your life just to give us new life thank you Jesus now from the lips of the forgiven here in anthem arise cause Jesus you're alive
above it all. I know sometimes I need to be reminded where God's place is in my life. And it's over the natural. It's over our circumstances. He reigns above every single thing we're facing, from the small to the large. So it's great that we get to come together today and sing that out, confess that over our lives, confess that over our families, that our God reigns above it all. So Crossing Church, wherever you are, even if you're watching with us online, will you join us in prayer? Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you reign above it all and thank you for reminding us time and time again that you reign above it all. You reign over our finances. You reign over our families. You reign over sickness and disease. You reign over hurt. And we just thank you that you are a merciful Father 
who reigns above every single thing. And it's in your mighty and matchless and holy name that we pray. And as a church, we say, amen. Amen. If you're watching online, type amen. <laughs> it is a great day to be in church. For those of you who are in the room, thank you for braving this cold weather. It's rainy. Those of you who are online who stayed in your pajamas, no shame. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> So be sure to message someone in the chat. Let them know to come to church. Tag them in the comments. We'd love to see you there. And church, why don't you greet a neighbor? Tell them they're singing beautifully. All that good stuff. And before we jump into the message, and before we go into video announcements, I want to let you know of a couple of things. First things first, our worship team has released an EP. We have a CD. Come on. Woo. We're very, very excited and grateful for this music because it was released at the right time. Amen. <laughs> so if you haven't listened to it, I encourage you, download it, check it out. Wherever you stream your music, it is available. Or if you're in the room today, you can pick up your copy just outside in the foyer. And then tomorrow, and I believe Tuesday as well, is on Deco Day. So if you're available and you're free, we need some help. We're packing up our Christmas stuff. We're getting ready for 2021 and all the fun stuff we have planned. So if you are available, come on out. We're getting started at 9 a.m. Many hands make for light work, isn't that right? Yeah, so come on out. <laughs> and the Lord will redeem your time, I am sure of it. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you today. Why don't you guys go ahead, take a seat, and turn your attention to the screen. Hey everyone, welcome to The Crossing. We're so glad you're here. If this is your first time here, we would love to get to know more about you. If you're with us in person, you can find a Connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you. Grab that, fill it out with as much or as little information as you'd like, and you can drop it off at the Connect desk where we would love to give you a gift. If you're joining us online, you can head over to our website and click that Connect button there at the top of the page. Fill it out with your information and someone from our team will reach out to see how we can connect with you. If you've recently renewed your walk with Christ or given your life to Him, then water baptism is your next step. We love these Sundays where we get to celebrate with you. And our next Baptism Sunday is coming up on January 24th in the 11 a.m. service. You can sign up by going to our website. Here at The Crossing, we believe that freedom is found when we're connected in life-giving community. And we can't wait to be together again this spring for our life groups. If you've ever thought about leading a life group, this is the time to get signed up. And a life group can be all kinds of things. It can be a Bible study or a book study. It could also be a play group or even a sports group. Whatever's on your heart to connect other people into community. This is the time to get registered. You can find more information about becoming a life group leader on our website. Well, guys, that's all I've got for you. Again, we are so glad that you're here. Now let's open up our notes app, take out your notebook and a pen, lean in and help me welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Randy. Hey, everybody. Good morning to you. Thank you for that. So appreciate all of you. How are y'all doing this morning? It's been a crazy week, huh? We're going to get through all this. I want to start by saying, and by the way, welcome to everybody there that's watching us online. I think we've got probably about 50% of our, of our congregation that has returned to us that are, that are here. Most of you still, uh, many of you still out there. I want to encourage you to continue on. I know you heard some through the announcements. Continue on in your 37 days devotional. Uh, ordinarily, what would happen is I set these up some time ago. And uh, we're going to be talking about Elijah this week. And this whole thing was written uh, back in 2020 because I was anticipating the Spirit of the Lord would be saying this, rise, rise. We got beat up a little bit, and we are. And so I picked characters from the Scripture and, and just 
pulled things from their lives that showed how guys that got knocked down got back up. Ordinarily, I'd be preaching that, that right now, but uh, given the, the week that we've had, those of you that are new with us just know this. Anytime we set a sermon series, it's sort of what we're going to preach. Uh, <laughs> It was just a real strong chance, you know, just the way I'm built, and it's just how God, honestly, and I'm not making excuses, it's just how he built me, that uh, I have a, kind of a prophetic, strong, what's, what's happening right now, what's God saying right now? And uh, given the extraordinary week that we've had, I want to give a word to that. Very much fits what, what the devotional was for last week and what we talked about, which is following Jesus. So, uh, so gang, what, what, are, what are we, some, some of you uh, may be thinking, what, what extraordinary thing happened? Uh, if you don't own a television or any type of internet access or smoke signals or anything else, then you might be there. But we had an extraordinary, an extraordinary, it was an extraordinary week, but actually, actually it wasn't, but let me explain what I mean. So certainly Wednesday, we had a wonderful service here and we spent a lot of time praying about the fact that in front of all of our, our eyes, we watched the, the Capitol and uh, the, uh, the Senate and, uh, and, or the House of Representatives stormed by people, all kinds of things. It wasn't Trump guys, it was Antifa, it was this and that, and all of that stuff will be wrestled and tweeted and all that forever and ever. And uh, it was an awful day. People died, uh, and, but something, I was waiting for somebody to stand up and lead, like really lead really lead, and uh, because there's such a vacuum of leadership, it didn't happen. That's, what, that's really one of our issues, is an enormous vacuum of credible leadership that any of us believe. Everybody can say the right thing. Who cares? That's, we're saturated with tweetable idealism. But as far as a human being that we say, it's not that we don't believe what you're saying. We don't believe you having that guy, that gal, Bunch of people, politicians jumped behind microphones and said uh, idealistic things. One of them that I took quite issue with uh, was, this was from news anchors and different politicians. Lindsey Graham had a, something like this. He said, this doesn't represent America. This is just a small group. This does not represent who we are. Newsflash. Watch the film. Watch the film. When you're watching film on Monday with your coaches for a game you played on Friday night and you do something wrong and they say, did you see that? You don't look at the film and go, that's not who I am. You did it, it's on the film. Look at the film of the last year. That completely represents. The, way, the reason I say it wasn't an extraordinary week, I've seen this in my mind a bunch of times. I, I have been watching this in my mind. Some of you and I have had coffee together where I have said, uh, there's anger, not just for, you know, Black Lives Matter and what we would, you know, for, uh, let, oh, I said that, now I got to clean that up. Here's the deal. Black Lives Matter is a great statement, absolutely, beautiful statement. I agree with the statement, but it umbrellaed some evil that goes on underneath that umbrella. Well, the same evil is possible under Make America Great Again. It's, it's not, no matter how you brand, we're so used to branding everything and then saying, don't touch it because of the brand. Where, are there some big boys and girls? Is there any adults left that can stand up and go, no, we got to call balls and strikes on both sides and call it like it is. And this is not, hear me, the, 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 the battle that's happening right now is not between Democrats and, and Republicans. It is not. And winning it means nothing. We've been here before. One, one you know, I can, there's, you want to know what's going to happen? Here's Randy Harvey the prophet. In two years... The Senate and the House are going to flip Republican because it's done this a bunch of times. And the fact that one party holds all of them, the world's not coming to an end. What, the, what Lindsey Graham and all the politicians that stepped behind microphones that said as they are trying to lead, this doesn't represent America, that's, that's the problem. It absolutely does. I've got anger I deal with. I mean, I'm a... Spirit filled, have the, the fruit of self control, thank the Lord. But there's been a bunch of times where, in my mind, some ignorant politician has said something demeaning to my, my intelligence. And if I could have gotten through the television in about a seven or eight second surge of rage, I, Randy Harvey, would be in jail along with whoever else 
Or is that thing? I'm not surprised at all, and it's not over. The anger boiling in this nation, it is boiling over. And for us to think that there's some superhero president on either side, you find them, that they can fix this, they can't because the problem is not political. That's not the problem. This is a spiritual battle, and we, the church, have laid down our arms and put our hope in some political savior, and we've got to pick our arms back up and go back to battle for what the real issues are. Now, like it or not, take me off your Christmases or whatever, I, I, I've, you know, I had this envisioned this in my mind. Wouldn't it be great to have a news station, not Fox, that it's going to give the, uh, the, you know, the conservative bend, and not a, you know, CNN that's going to give the liberal agenda, and not MSNBC. God help whatever that is, <laughs> Lord. Um, I, I'd like to see a Bible twenty four seven news station. We rep- We are God news. And we don't care whether there's an R or our loyalties are not to Republicans or Democrats. Our loyalty is to God and to his word. And get it right, we'll say the word of God, that's right. Get it wrong, I don't care who you are. My loyalty stops with regard to my political affiliation. It stops way short of, I won't, I won't bypass this. And when my, when my group is off and and comes into conflict with this, I'm out. When that fork in the road, I'm sticking with this. I'm sticking with the word of God. I'd love to have a news station that instead of having a conservative agenda or a liberal agenda, it was simply a God agenda. They would just open the Bible and say, what happened today? This just in, what happened today? Our president said this, according to the Bible, that's unbiblical and God is not happy with that. Our nation needs to repent. That's the news flash. This law was passed and it's unrighteous. This law was passed and it's righteous. I would, I just like just clicking it off. Just, we represent God. I want you to hear me, gang. That's us. That's us in this room, so everybody watching me. I believe right now across this nation, by the spirit of the living God, there are pastors and churches gathering and the spirit of God is taking the, the steering wheel to speak to his church to say, hey, it's not a Republican party, it's not a Democratic party. I haven't authorized either of them to save this nation. I've authorized you, the church. That was the plan to begin with. That's always the plan. And what you'll hear today, some of you will go, oh, that's old fashioned. I want you to hear me. The plan to save, this message is called, let me see what I said, it called it. God's full, this, I love this, God's foolproof plan to save America. That's today's talk. A foolproof, not full, fool. F-O-O-L, fool. That's the word. The scripture divides people into groups, wise and foolish. Five wise virgins, five foolish. The wise man built his house on the rock, foolish man on the sand. And so it's, it's directed by wisdom. What we're looking for in leadership is wisdom, not smart. There's lots of smart people. Few wise. Our, our government's been suffering. Yeah, that's not the first time you heard it from here. And I'm not you, it's not, you don't have to be brilliant to see this. There's smart people in the government, very little wisdom, because wisdom starts with the fear of God. Once you no longer fear God, you no longer have any hope for having wisdom, which is far more. Wisdom is how to invest the knowledge you have so as to get a, a godly and peaceful result. It's how to prosper the gifts that you have. Lots of people have gifts and smarts, but without wisdom, you, 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 can't, you can't operate and, and, and create atmospheres that create the things that you're trying to create. It's a thing of God. So having said that, I, I, this is God's foolproof plan, and I'm likely going to need to take this into next week because 35 minutes can't solve America's issues, nor the churches. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Two key biblical problems, and I don't have a text for you today. I'm going to give you a statement, then I'm going to read you a scripture to to show it. So this is the new news station we're starting, by the way. Two two key biblical problems that contribute to America's weakening trend. Two key biblical, it's not all of them, not a thorough thing. Number one, American leaders and people becoming proud and worshiping what they accomplished 
when it was God's hand that made America great the first time. If America's gonna be made great again, it won't be by any president. It'll be by God because he's the only one, that, he's the one that did it the first time. Pastor, America's still great. There are some residual effects, but we're not the America that we talk about and that we espouse. Yes, that was a great America. This nation has changed. We are not one nation and we are not under God. But we gotta deal with the cards on the table now. I mean, I love reading history and all that, and it's wonderful, it's powerful. We have a, a strong foundation, and we're not so far gone that this can't be saved. This can be turned around. But the truth is, I'm, I'm wondering if we actually believe that it isn't a political solution, but it's actually a spiritual solution. I think we've lost our faith and our confidence that it's actually God who can do it. And so before there's any hope for the, for the nation, the church itself, that's why revival starts in, in the people of God. Our hearts have to be revived that, wait a minute, yeah, there is no human that can fix this. Why am I spending all my energy, all my tweeting, all my online passion? God, if we spent a third of what we spend in political passion on kingdom business, would the world be saved by now? Tweet them to death. They'd give up and go, I'll come to Jesus, just stop tweeting. Two key biblical, so American leaders and people becoming proud and worshiping what they accomplished when it's God's hands that made America great the first time. Here it is in scripture, Romans 1, and I've spent a lot of time on this, so I won't develop these thoughts, just Romans 1, 21. Yes, America, I'm gonna, we're, I'm gonna put the, if you will, the randiology on this. Yes, America knew God, but Americans wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And Americans began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, American minds became dark and confused, claiming to be wise. America instead became utter fools. 128, since America thought it foolish to acknowledge God, Americans abandoned them to their, oh, he, God, abandoned Americans to their foolish thinking and let them do the things they should never, that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. That's the Bible. Whether there's an R in front of any of that behavior or a D in front of it or a Bernie, that's the Bible. Number two, America's government leadership is void of godly wisdom and, co and cooperates ignorantly with the influence of demons. You need to understand, again, this isn't between Democrats and Republicans. This is between Satan and God. This is between a strategy of demons and a strategy of the kingdom of God. That's where the battle is. And some of you are thinking, well, so you're talking Republicans or the godly. No, they're not. We're not even equating the two. There are evil humans, and on both sides, we are quite complicit with the strategy of demonic forces for this nation. I'll read it to you in Scripture. James 3. James is all about wisdom, by the way. J James said, you want wisdom? I'll give it to you freely. At, and you, that's James 1, but here's James 3. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition, I want you to think about, I'm talking about our leadership, bitterly jealous and selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Everybody say demonic. It's a wisdom. It's a knowledge that comes. It seems right. Romans 1 said this will seem right to you. I'm not gonna interrupt that. 
demonic wisdom, if you will. It's selfish ambition. I'm driving to get what I want. For jealousy and self, oh, so for verse 16, for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, and the actual better translation in the Greek, it's the word strife. It's the word strife. For wherever there is jealousy and strife, there you will find disorder and every kind, uh, uh, and every, uh, and evil of every kind. You'll find disorder, what's happening in our nation, and on every front, disorder and every kind of evil. Why is it there? Our leaders and ourselves, where there's strife. What is strife? It's contention between people. This is in your marriage. This is in everything in life. If there's lot, all of us deal with some levels of strife. But when there's continual strife, this is how you can mark. You can know this. There's continual strife because there is selfish ambition and bitter jealousy. This describes our, our political, our government. Anywhere you see that strife, and gang, think about it. What, what does the news make their money on? Why do you stay glued to it? Do you stay glued to it because there's good news? That's boring. Strife. You wanna know how demons enter and take over a nation? Strife. We become addicted to it. We like it. We tweet it. We talk about it. We become drunk on it. Now, hear me, God, I'm, feeling, I'm gonna lose a bunch of you on this. I, I, I voted for our president. I, I've, I'm praying for, I prayed for him this morning. My heart is broken about how this presidency is ending. It is sad. It, the, the state of our nation is sad. And there's multiple and many fronts. Ah, I don't wanna make this... It, I'm, I'm trying to keep this out of political, but, I, but we also, as, as the church, we've got to call balls and strikes. We've got to call it like it is. One of the things that I think many of us felt when he became president, many of us, and I know everybody here didn't vote for the president, and I'm not assuming that, okay? I know a lot of evangelical Christians vote Republican, all right? And you're probably, I'm probably one of the few pastors that will actually say these things like that because I'm one of the dumb ones that's going to get hammered with a bunch of Fox email news, so send them. Uh, Dale.daily at thecrossing.com. <laughs> one of the things that we sort of felt was we're tired of being lied to and we're angry. And finally, somebody is voicing our anger at the things we're angry about. So it felt good. Punch, punch, you know, punch the media. Punch, you know... Sister Pelosi, punch, you know, punch, punch, punch. And there was some satisfaction in that. Now, let me just speak for me. I can't speak for the whole church. I'm just speaking for me. There was some satisfaction in that. Week two, three tweets per night, strife. 10 tweets, strife, strife, strife. Of all the great things he actually got accomplished, great weakness between him, the senators, the House, and this, this, this started well before he was president. That's why I say Wednesday wasn't some anomaly. That's been waiting to happen. It's been happening this whole week. Go look at the film. That's who we are. Look at the film. Forget all this idealism. It's like, you gotta deal with, I mean, the first place, before you can recover from anything, you gotta, you gotta look at yourself and go, I am broken. This nation is broken. This goes way, way back. This strife between press, Republicans, Democrats, we hadn't had a sensible group of people up there in at least the last 15 years of my life. And the amount of credible leaders, I'm not just beating them up to be personal and to get anybody revved up. I'm trying to tell you what we saw on Wednesday, that anger, it's in me. I've spent the last two years of my life, I have dealt more with anger and rage in me. Here's how you know that the demonic influence is getting in how many of you ever say anything really intelligent when you're angry? What's the worst, I mean, your worst moments, did it come out of settled wisdom or did it come out of emotion? How, when's if you hurt your wife or your husband the most? When you're, this is the work of brilliant demonic forces. This boiling pot has been boiling a long time and it's, it's cancerously come through the church 
and we've bought in, and I'm telling you, this pastor is as angry as what I saw when I am not at all surprised by that, and it's not the last time we'll see that. This anger isn't going anywhere. You see the lack of wisdom immediately. When immediately after this happens, with 13 days left in a presidency, the, a group of, of our leaders start calling for impeachment. Yeah, that's gonna settle us all down. That's gonna calm them right down. The ignorance in our leaders is just stunning. It's stunning to me. I think, my God, how can any human put hope in this for the future of this nation? And here's the answer. You can't. Stop trying. It isn't there. And there's no Superman on the right or the left. It isn't there. It's not there, gang. Are we hopeless, though? If you're a... hmm. If your hope is in a a, a political answer and you're a believer, shame on you. If we're going to call them like it is, let me call some balls and strikes there. Do you not believe in God? Jesus? The Bible? Dear, dear God. We put way too much confidence and faith there. All right, I'm getting revved up here. Thank you, my brother. I'll be running for office next year. Please vote for me. I didn't finish all that scripture, and I should have. Okay. But the wisdom from above, here's what it looks like. You want to look, when you see wisdom, it's first pure, it's peace-loving, gentle at all times. I, you can't even remember the last time I seen you this now. Willing to yield. Wow. It's full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. And gang, here's what wisdom produces. It produces the atmosphere The people atmosphere, we can call it culture, we can call it whatever, but it's an atmosphere. Great wise leaders can create in the atmosphere the right spirit, is the way I would say, the right spirit that from that breeds peace. We are an enormously void, and as many things as our president did really well, he did not have godly wisdom. He could not produce that. In fact, the, the man feeds on conflict. I don't think he can sleep unless he's punched at least three people. He's got to have a fight going. That might have some satisfaction in it. It makes for good news, and our country's addicted to it now. And it's played right into the strategies of demonic wisdom. And the demons who put the plan together are going, we got this, because we bought in. And not today. It's a new day. What, what do we do, Pastor Randy? And I'm going to give you the short version here. I'm sticking with the Bible. This is not a new and hip, cool, current revelation. It's a very old one. Acts chapter 1, verse 6, Jesus is going to give us some direction. Therefore, this is Jesus. He's died. He's rose again. He's about to ascend. He's sitting with the disciples. This is his last sentences to them, last instructions. All right, here's the conversation. Therefore, When they, the disciples, had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, here's what I want you to know. Their minds are still on a political rescue. That's where their head was. Are you going to become the king, and we're going to overthrow Rome, that government? Is it now? It's like, he said to them, it's not for you to know. Get your head out of that. It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put forth by his own authority, but you shall receive power. And he switches their attention. Quit worrying about who's going to be the president. No, guys, I'm not going to come and be the president of Israel, and we're not going to overthrow Rome. Someday I am going to come in great power, and trust me, no one's going to be wondering, is that you? I will come in in authority and power, but it's not now, and you don't need me to do that now. I need you to know the authority you have. You can change a nation. It's not for you to know the times and the seasons for the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And so the, the, the power given to the church at this moment was enough to change every culture, everywhere, every people. So what was Jesus saying? Number one, you gonna hear me, church, hear me. Got to hear me on this one. Jesus speaking. This is the Bible. Surrender a hope in a political savior. Step one. They ask him, are you going to become 
Rome is driving us crazy. We can't stand that how oppressive our government is. Is it at this time, and I can take you through lots of places in the New Testament, I won't take the time to go there, but people started leaving Jesus when they realized he wasn't gonna be the political solution. Step one, stop looking for a political savior. Stop. It ain't gonna happen. That's not the promise. And we don't need it. If he made, he said, no, Rome's still gonna rule. And you're still gonna overcome. In fact, Rome's gonna eventually, your government's going to attack you and you're gonna win anyway. Because of the power I put into you and the way I'm gonna change the world through you and your government's never gonna be for you. Now we've got a far better situation than Rome being over us. We can win with the cards on the table, guys. So step number one, it, 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 you, you don't need the government. You don't need the government to be for you, gang. In uh, 1950, giving you this before, we can find this in several places. In 1950, Mao Zedong uh, in China, imposing all of that communist stuff, made Christianity illegal, all Bibles burned and out, all missionaries out of the country. And if you, in it, in it, it was, you went to a torture camp or you were killed if you were found hosting Christian meetings in your home. Read, uh, there's a book I'll give you, it's called The Praying Man. I cannot remember that author, but it, just one testimonial of, a, of somebody being a believer at that time. You, once you pick the book up, you can't put it down. The Praying Man, just a testimony of what it cost him as a, a man in China to live for God. So the government totally against the church, no Bibles allowed, illegal, missionaries out. We, the government, are gonna stamp out Christianity. Now, today, do you know where the largest church in the world is? No buildings? China, 120 million strong. No cool screens, no cameras. Underground church, government, not just not happy with them, illegal. We don't need... The, nation, the world's not in need of a political solution. And we can do just fine regardless of who's sitting in that. But listen, vote. I am telling you, vote. But don't you think, think about your influence on this nation. If our hope is that it's a political solution, that means that each one of us has a one to 150 millionth percentile influence on our country. And not every day, one time every two years. Think it, they've got 150 million voters. Your vote is worth one to 150 millionth. That's how much influence you carry in voting and only once every two years. Do you think we got a little headroom to have a little more influence than that? I certainly hope so. Vote, it's important. But we way overstocked our faith and hope in that. Here's what Jesus is saying, fellas, get your head out of that. Stop all that. Get your head back in the plan. You've got the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got the Word. You can actually change humans, human beings. If we don't change that, getting the lawmakers who try to control the evil that's in them, it's out of control. We have now surpassed, the evil in this nation has surpassed any law we can pass to control it, and we keep putting our stock in that. We've got to change the hearts of people. And this isn't just church feel-good stuff. If we don't do this, we'll be... I don't know what happens to this nation. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go down scratching and clawing because I believe in the plan that God gave us. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a God guy. This is where I'm at. I'm a church guy. Secondly, be filled with the Holy Spirit and I'll make you credible witnesses. Um, let me read you the scripture. This is what Jesus told them. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor can they... Uh, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Pastor Randy, we heard it before. I learned it in Sunday school. La, 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 la. Okay. You know that any company with any product that has success, they use the plan of Jesus because this is how you sway people. This is the plan. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'll just go ahead and give you the, I'll spill the beans here, it's 10 a.m. Uh, here's the plan that we've had, and when I say the word, some of you old church people go, oh, 
Here's the plan. Make disciples. That's the plan. How do you change a nation? You make disciples of Jesus. Not converts. Lots of converts. Lots of people who have a concept of God. I'm talking about the real deal. I have determined to admire Jesus, and I'm going to be like him in every area of my life, or at least I'm going to die trying. Again, here's the plan that he put in place, and this is where, if you want to know what success lies, this works in anything. I'm going to make you a credible witness, and when you're a credible witness for Jesus, your light's going to shine, and all you got to do is don't, don't hide it. Just be available. Make you a credible witness. My next scripture is when Jesus gave the great commission. Jesus came to his disciples. I've been given authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples. Everybody say, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to, uh, these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given to you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I want to give you a very practical example that Jesus taught, Jesus taught us. Okay, credible witness. Everybody say credible witness. All right. Uh, so last year, about this time, a little earlier than this time, for several years coming up on, on New Year's, I had been trying to take off a few pounds. How many of you at the first of the year, you think, I got to take off a few pounds, right? I just, all of us probably just, listen, I was working, running, turkey eating, avocado eating. I had the Randy Brilliant plan, and I had a place where I would get to. I just thought, how do you get past? There was, I, I could not get past a certain place, trying to get healthy and all that. Okay. Uh, Joe and Becky Cruz, who you've seen lead worship up here, Becky had been having some back issues and having a hard time getting out of them. Uh, she took an approach, which was she got an, an eating discipline, uh, the, the plan's called Optavia. I don't sell it. I don't coach it. That's just what it's called, Optavia, an eating strategy, if you will, free box stuff. Anyway, here's the deal. They come in uh, to one of our services clearly skinny, <laughs> just skinny. Here's the deal. I go up to them and say, what are you doing? to get skinny. They said, we have a plan. I said, what's the plan? They said, here's the plan. Gave me the plan. I, it, it, and this is what I said, we're coaches. We'll walk with you if you wanna do this. You know what the next question is. What's it cost? First First several months per month, 425 a month. Ah, so there's a cost. You know what? When your desire to change exceeds all your little fears, you'll pay the cost. I said, I'm in. Okay, I want to hear something. I did something I've never done before with any diet or strategy. I always take the plan and modify it with my brilliance. I'm very, very smart. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'll do the Atkins things, but I'm going to trick it out with a little bit of that and a little bit of beach, you know, South Beach. And man, I put together the most brilliant thing because I, I am not going to be told what to do. I'll, here's what, I, this was between me and God as I was starting there. This is what I used as my, if you will, my fasting time last year. Fasting is telling your body what it will do, not your body telling you what you're gonna do. And so I just used it and said, okay, because there was a lot of stuff you gotta cut out. Dairy, cheese, ooh, see cheese. Sugar, you know what I'm saying? What do you want? You want results or what do you want? I said, and here's what I told him, no matter what you say or what this plan says, I'm going to do it exactly like you say do it. I'm going to pay the cost. I'm going to do it exactly like you say do it. Part of that meant, she said, 
as a coach, I'm going to call you every day, and you need to take a picture of the scales every day and send it to me. I'm a grown man. <laughs> but if you say so, at your word, I'm going to work the plan. Took some humility, but here's the great thing. They walked with me. Loved a little today, hey, it happens. Here's what you do. You hit a plateau, they kept coaching. You know what I'm describing to you? How every great product works, how human cultures change. No company came up with this. Jesus said, I invented you, and I know how to change you, and I know how to build a culture. Do you know what? When they came in, they weren't saying, repent, stop eating poorly. They didn't have to say a thing. I saw the results in them. I went to them. The light was on. I came to the light. They were a credible witness. And here's the thing. We got, careful how I say this, because I've certainly been it. Lots of believers have lots of information, but no credibility. We don't like information. Information really doesn't change you that much. Somebody that walks in and, and you say, something is different about you. What are you doing to, to have this happen? Well, guess what? The football's on the 50 at least. If you're walking with Jesus and somebody says, my wife is nuts. I don't know how much longer I can take this. What are y'all doing in your marriage? Guess what? The light was on. My husband doesn't ever listen to me. Yesterday, in 10 minutes, I told him 111 things, and he didn't remember five of them. Could be the volume of information, but I'm just saying. What are y'all doing? Gang, do you know what the plan is to win this nation? It's for the church first to become credible again. Not about tweeting and quoting and all that. It's about you and your life recommitting Jesus I'm actually gonna make you Lord again. I said Lord the first time, but here's what that means. No matter what you say in any part of my life, I'll do it. My desire is stronger than my flesh. My desire to wanna see change and to do it differently. I've seen believers that are the real deal. I wanna change. You know what happens at that point? Here's what he'll say, I have a plan. It's in the scripture. We can, maybe we'll spend the next weeks talking about it. We can talk about anxiousness. Then here's it. Be anxious for nothing. With everything, with prayer and supplication, make your request be made known to God. Peace of God will guard your heart. Christ Jesus. On and on and on and on. For everything that needs to be corrected in your life, he has a plan. Here's what you have to do. I'm a grown man. I'm going to trick that out. All right, I'll do it. If you start doing this with your life in following Christ, you don't have to go knock on any doors. They'll come to you. What's going on in your life? I went to the gym yesterday and just tried this out. I, I can't tell you how much joy I had yesterday. I was just so excited. I was like, Lord, whatever it is I am, there's a whole bunch I'm not, but I had two different people approach me. Uh, one African-American young man, good Lord, that guy was just jacked. I thought, well, you're certainly not approaching me because you need workout tips. <laughs> I know you probably think underneath all this, that's what I look like. I don't. But we just struck up this conversation, most joyful time. I didn't win him to Jesus. It wasn't that. It was just, I don't know what, it was. I just trusted, Lord. Anybody that comes to me, I'm going to make myself available. I'm not going to go banging on doors begging people to come to Jesus. The plan wasn't necessarily, to, yes, there's a time to go out and there's a time to reach out. But honestly, if we'll work the plan, They'll see how you look, and they'll approach you. What are you doing? What's happening? Why is this this way? Then, then you coach them. Then you got to hit them with this. It'll cost you. What? Yeah, it'll cost you. But if you're willing to pay, and you want results bad enough, this will change your life. And what happens is one credible witness after another. How did China get 120 million people. It wasn't because of preaching from stages or churches. One credible witness after another saying, Jesus has changed my life. 
oh, not just some testimony from the 60s. They could see it. Gang, this is the way the nation can be changed. And you're thinking, gosh, that's gonna take us forever. No, it's not. Jesus spent one and a half years with 12 guys, lost one. So with 11 guys in one and one half years, he took off and said, I am out. You guys have made me nuts. I'm, I'm leaving you. And 11 rednecks, half-baked, they still were messing up. They had enough of what they needed, and they changed this world. 11 guys, in a one and a half years, this nation could be changed in the next two years because we're going to change the Senate. Stop all that. No, because the church, the real governing body that God has set here to represent him, because the church actually starts to believe what it is I'm saying to you. We actually believe it. When you make him Lord, it means I trust you. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Uh, my, my sweet wife has had a, a bit of a personal revival. And it's because of a woman now, hear me out. Her name is Sister Billie Jean Bishop. Sister Billie Jean Bishop. We used to use sister and brother when I was growing up in the Assemblies of God Church. And in the Assemblies of God growing up, we were legalistic, but if you were United Pentecost, if you were part of a United Pentecost, we, we were considered liberal com compared to the United Pentecostals. And so I had a version in my mind of what a United Pentecostal was. Well, I start seeing a, a, my wife fired up about prayer. She's listening to prayer at 7 a.m., 8 a.m. She's leading prayer. I'm watching her life change, and she's quoting this stuff. Sister Billie Jean Bishop said this. Sister Billie Jean Bishop said that. Well, she would walk by me with her phone while Sister Billie Jean, and I've never seen Billie Jean Bishop, never seen her, because she uses an Android when she does her, leads her, her time. But I would hear her voice, gang, listen to me. Somebody that's been with God sounds different than somebody just repeating the right information. Praise God, bring the right information. But a person that's been in the presence of God, there's a sound to it. It's not what they're saying that's moving you. It's them. It's a credible human being where you hear it and you just go, that's God. I don't know what it is, but I wanna to listen to this lady. To this day, I've never met her. I've never seen her, but I have met her and I have seen her. I've seen her in my wife. I've seen one credible witness with God touch my wife. And I've seen my wife begin to touch others. And when I listen to this precious woman, I hear the sound of God. She's coming to the breakfast, the first breakfast that, that our, our ladies are doing. She's gonna do two sessions. And ladies, I'm, just, I'm gonna tell you as your pastor, let me go ahead and just get this out. If you're looking for a, a kind of hip, cool, and current, you know, woman with great highlights and ripped jeans and, you know, the, the look, and with a great, you know, with two books about how much, you know, God almost loves you as much as you love you, uh, this is not going to be the, the one for you. I doubt she's going to have cut, cut jeans and a, and a cool tattoo. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, nothing wrong with style. I'm just telling you what I know about United Pentecost. If you're coming for a style tip, skip this breakfast. But if you want to drink, Here's the deal, we've spent so much time trying to be relevant. If you wanna meet a woman who hadn't tried to be like the world at all, actually she's been spending all of her time trying to be like Jesus. If you wanna see what the difference feels like and looks like, be at this breakfast. Because I've seen the effects. And it reminded me, Jesus said, guys, I don't care how cool you look, what your hair looks like, and frankly, what president you put up there. Do what you gotta do to be, you know, we, we've got some Romans 13 as well that we need to take care of our governmental authorities and respect them. But that's not the hope of this nation. It's for people like Billie Jean Bishop, who nobody will ever know her, she'll never be on a Christian TV show, but her light is shining and she's touching literally thousands of people because she's been with Jesus. And she's touched my wife, and my wife is touching folks. And she's touched me. And you know what? Can you imagine how quickly this nation could change if we stopped trying to be like the world 
and went back to saying, how can I be more like Jesus? Because here's the thing, Billie Jean Bishop hasn't marketed anything. She hadn't branded anything. She doesn't have a logo, but she's, she's gone to hell and back a bunch of times in her life and she has, she has touched God. The man that killed her son, she won him to Jesus. If you want to touch the real thing, this woman doesn't need to be marketed. Here's the deal. When you walk in skinny, they'll come find you. What have you done? When you walk in carrying the presence, what we work so hard at, you don't have to beg people to come to Jesus. They'll ask you, what are you doing? The Billie Jean bishops of this world. And you know what? Everybody in here can be like that. Every single person in here can have a relationship with Jesus like that. And gang, here's our starting place. They send the pianist to let me know, Pastor, you've gone over again. This is important. I want everybody to listen to me. My conviction this morning in prayer, and I'm, I'm under conviction right now, and I'm working this out between me and the Lord on a personal level. Lordship means 100%. I believe, and I hear it. I've seen it in teaching. I see it a lot, and, and it's, it's probably in me, and I'm on the search. So I'm just telling you, I believe we need to have a corporate repentance for making Jesus 85% Lord and holding that other 15% out. Won't work that way. You go to heaven and be a good person and all that. But the plan to save America is going to require saying, whatever you say, no matter how humbling it might be, Take a picture of my weight and send it to you where you could post it on Facebook. <laughs> but if that's what you say, I want to change so bad, I'm going to follow the plan. I'm tired of mediocrity. And I'm tired of so much energy going into politics when it's not even the answer. And we have the answer. We have the answer. I'd like you just to bow your heads, and I'm talking now to both believers and unbelievers. I believe, well, I'm not sure how to even explain this. I believe what the Spirit is calling for is every one of us to say, Jesus, once again, I surrender to you 100%. You're Lord of everything. I am wrestling in my own life to say, God, Whatever you say in whatever area, I'll do it. I won't change in my life that bad. I'm 100% your Lord. I will drop my nets and follow you, drop my career, drop my identity, drop whatever. But I'm no longer trying to be hip, cool, and current and relevant and all of that, and that's got a place. I want to be like you. And so I just want you to wrestle with this. If you're able today to say, you know what? I, I'm, I am going to make Jesus, as I start this new year, I'm making Jesus Lord 100% afresh. I'm surrendering and saying, that last 10% I surrender. I won't fight you for the steering wheel of my life. I surrender to you, Jesus, my Lord. It starts with us there. If that's you, would you just lift your hand with heads bowed and eyes closed? You would lift it with this pastor, my hands in the air. Jesus, we surrender. It's, it's just words right now. It's just prayer and words right now. If, over the next hours and the, the days and the weeks, this is gonna get challenged. Thank you that you said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You'll be our coach. You'll walk with us and help us through this. But Lord, we as a people say, whatever you say in whatever area of our life to do, I'm telling you right now, with everything I can do to, to obey, I'll obey it. I wanna change. I wanna see you. Jesus, 
be the Lord of this church. And if you're listening to me right now and you've never received Jesus as Savior, you simply say, Jesus, I surrender my life 100% to you. Would you save me? I confess my sin to you. I ask your forgiveness and I surrender 100%. I wanna be like you. I wanna be like you. And I want people to come and find me so I can tell them this is what Jesus has done in my life. Lord, I ask for, of all things revival might be, I ask that you would revive your lordship in your church and your surrendership in your people and our hunger to be like you. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Praise God, gang. You stand to your feet. And uh, we're gonna be meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this week in the morning, 6 a.m. We'll be on Facebook Live as well, leading us to that time of prayer. Continue on. This is the life of Elijah this week. And, uh, but next week, it's, there's a good chance we'll be, we'll be off, off script Again, I, I believe we need to get back to where we actually admire Jesus. And I wanna start to, to call him out in a way where you say, I wanna be like that. I wanna be emotionally strong like that. I wanna be able to say on the night I was betrayed, I kept, the, I kept going. I didn't let offenses get me. On the night he was betrayed, he broke bread and went and died for the guy that betrayed him. Where do you get that kind of strength? I wanna be like that Jesus. I want us to talk about Jesus so that we refire what it means to look like him. I promise you, gang, this week, somebody, pray this way. Let somebody see something in me of you, Jesus. Let somebody, don't, don't go hunting. They're gonna come to you. You be ready. I don't start screaming in tongues and t tell them, to go, you know, or you could, but just, just tell them, this is what Jesus is doing in my life. Not perfect, not that, but here's what he's doing in my life. Just be a light. Don't hide. They're going to come to you. They came to me in the gym. They'll come to you. This is how I'm praying. Let your light shine. Let's go back to the plan. This nation can be turned upside down in a short, millions of believers out there. This thing can be turned around in a, in, in a big hurry, regardless of who's sitting in the White House. All right? I have one final prayer, and it's going to challenge you a little bit. Just, just try to go with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, First of all, I want to thank you for President Donald Trump, for the things he accomplished. Lord, I ask God during this transition that you would walk with him and his family. And Lord, regardless of all this, I don't know how to pray about a bunch of this, but I do know how to pray this. Lord, that's a human being. I ask that by your spirit, you would speak to him that you would visit him in night visions and in dreams. Lord, that any physical ailment or the stress of what he's going through that might be working against his body, his heart, his nerves, his mind, I ask you to heal him. And Lord, I don't know how you, I don't know how you can do it, but I know you can turn the most tragic circumstances and you can make something good out of it. I pray over the Trump family and I ask you more than anything, arrest their hearts by your spirit that they all would be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for the, for the good things that he invested in our nation, and I ask your blessings. Lord, over Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden, I ask for the exact same thing. Would you touch his mind and his heart? Would you, Lord, visit him in night vision? Lord, you say God controls the king's heart like a river and can turn it wherever I want it. Then I pray that prayer and I speak a blessing over Joe Biden and I ask you, God, to bring wise, godly men and women into our government. Until that happens, we're gonna stay our course and according to Romans 13, I believe, we're gonna pray for our leaders. I lift them to you and I lift up the United States of America. Bring revival to your church so that this nation is changed. This is our very humble prayer and we anticipate you're gonna answer yes. 
thank you, God. Bless this people now as we get into this week. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Let's go out there and have a good week, guys.